So Max Licato is joining us and Max has been on the show several times over the, the, the years and, and, and always, you know, you think about the times that we're living in and, and his new book is called you, you are never alone truth in the miracle of God's presence and power. Uh, so let's welcome back Max Licato. Max, welcome Max. back to the show. It's great. It's really great. You know, I may be wrong on this, but I, I was trying to recall the very first time I was on your show and I was there in person. I was there in person. And I believe uh, I'm really, I'm really pretty sure this is it. Uh, I believe it was right after 9-11. You uh, are correct. It, 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 just as it happened that year, uh, my book uh, called Traveling Light came out on September 17th. Yeah. Of course, 9-11, uh, September 11th. And so I was on a book tour and I can recall uh, talking to the two of you or the team or your entire team about the tragedy of 9-11 right there in your studios. And I think it's significant that here we are nearly two decades later in the aftermath of, of several, several uh, global challenges. Uh, so I'm thankful to be here. Thankful you guys are still talking and still encouraging. <laughs> I know millions of people count on you to, to lift their spirits and set their course each day. And we just make them yeah. feel better about themselves after they see what a wreck we are. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, sometimes people don't understand uh, how, 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 what a big deal grace is. And then they realize that God has redeemed us and they go, yeah. Oh, it is a big deal. Yeah, it yeah. does require. Uh, but if you remember Bubba, what Max is talking about, he came on the show talking about the book. And then you went and were part of a big prayer service. People gathered at the local arena, uh, the BJCC there in Birmingham. And we, we went to a service. Mm -hmm. we were part of, yep. uh, what's interesting governor of Alabama was supposed to be there. And he got called to, um, I'm not, he was a governor then. I'm sorry. He was, uh, he was actually in Congress, right? Bubba? Right. He uh, was, a, he was our Congressman and he was going to speak and didn't get to, to come to it because he was called back to the Capitol building because our attack on Afghanistan was about to start. We didn't know that. We knew it was right. coming, but it actually happened, I think, within 24 hours of when uh, that meeting took place. Right. And, and so, so that was that was the first time that we were all yep. together and so many times since. So, Max, uh, we were all talking in the break and as speedy, you know, as a good producer would do. Hey, guys, y'all are doing a great show, but nobody hears it. But y'all mm. uh, because, we, we, because these are these are very bizarre, perilous times that we're living in. And, and, and you're bringing up this point. Um, we talk about the virus and, and all that. And now, then you get into the, the strife you know, involving Antifa, and then you have people who are trying to protest. You have the, the racial elements have found their way back uh, into the, the American DNA. And there's just a lot of chaos going on. And, and the problems, as we were talking about in the break, are easy to see and certainly we want to try to get a plan to address those. But then there's this secondary thing that is happening to our country, which is equally important and may long term potentially be more damaging and that's the effect all this is having on the psyche of the people of our country. There's so much anxiety. Uh, we, as you and I were talking, the, the calls to uh, uh, mental health hotlines are 900 times what they were this time last year. 900 times, 900 wow. times. And we've read the horrifying statistics about a depression uh, being significantly up. I, I, I heard a statistic just last week that the number of uh, filings for divorce is up 26% over what it was this time last year. And so it's just like we're getting beat up. We're just getting beat up. And I think, I think it's so essential during a time like this to realize that we can only respond with spiritual weapons. Uh, we can't think for we can't th think for a moment that the government can solve this or a, a change in policy can. And I know we're in an election year, but nobody can think that the, a different president or the same president is going to fix this. Th we have to go deep in our own hearts and turn our hearts toward our heavenly father and cry out to God and ask him to help us to give us strength. And he will. He will. Here's where spiritual strength is absolutely essential. Well, Max, well, in any yeah, storm, ahead, I, I mean, it's key to where you're anchored. And yeah. I know Rick was yeah. talking about that in the break. If you, 
if you don't have a strong anchor and you don't have a big old steel chain uh, holding you down right now and the waters get high and the waters get rough and the winds blow, I mean, you're all over the place. You, you don't know if you're going to make it. You don't know if you're going to be turned over. But if you've got that anchor to go back to, even though the waves may get high and the winds may blow, you still are holding on and you've got something that you can call home base and something you can rely on. And that's what we find in our faith. Absolutely. You know, the $2 term theologians use is sovereignty, sovereignty, that God is reigning, that God is still in control, that there's never a moment that he's not running the universe. So this tells me and tells us we're not weather vanes whipped about by winds of fate. Uh, We're in the hands of a good living and loving God. Now, that doesn't mean we don't face challenges. It doesn't mean we don't battle diseases. It doesn't mean that we don't get laid off or load or lose our work. But it does mean our good God is in charge. We can sit in his lap. He's a heavenly father, and we can turn to him uh, for strength. Now, if somebody doesn't have that, it's not too late. <laughs> it's not too late. Right. You, you, you can today cry out to God and say, God, I've ignored you all my life. I've neglected you. I once knew you. I've pretended you weren't there. But, Lord, I'm coming because I've I've exhausted all my plan B, C, and D, and I need you. I need you. So this could turn into a moment of redemption for many people who have turned away from God. Can I tell you, Max, one of the ways that that's going to take place, and, and this is the way it should always be, but, you know, there's the way things should be, and then there's the way they really are. Uh, you know, until we are completely – uh, done with this flesh and we're standing in the presence of a holy God and everything is made new. Even those of us that have been redeemed, we're in a sanctification process. And as yeah. Paul talks about now the battle, I love what CS Lewis said. He said, it, 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 if you wanted to experience the, uh, the, the strength of the Nazis, he was writing during the time of, of world war II. It's not to go along with them. It's if you decide to resist them. Thus is the same thing with your flesh. Once you've been redeemed and your spirit that was dead has been made alive, now your flesh will fight for its life. And so you go through a process of of feeding the spirit and then trying to destroy the flesh. So I understand that we're still human, even those that have been redeemed, and we're in a process of being sanctified if we're willing to, to take those steps that God calls us to. However, these are the times when those that don't share our faith are watching us. And when we go around putting up Bible verses, be anxious about nothing. And what Paul said to Timothy, remember, we're not called to a spirit of fear. We can put those on social media all we want to, but if they look into our lives and they see us panic, like we have no hope, then, then this opportunity of redemption may not have the same draw. Speak to that. We desperately need a quorum of people who can take a deep breath receive the presence of God's spirit within them, trust the promises of God, trust the promises of God. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer. (laughs) Why? Because I've overcome the world. Amen. Okay. I got you, Lord. You're saying, okay, this is going to be a rough ride, but you're still in charge. So I can be of good cheer. Don't we need a quorum of people who in the middle of this crazy season, are going to say, okay, I'm going to get up every day. I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to lace up my boots. I'm going to go to the work. If I have a work, I'm going to go love my family. I'm going to honor my covenant. I'm not going to do stupid things. I think that's a key. My dad used to say, <laughs> stupid won't fix stupid. I think what, it, what he meant was he was saying, and if you're in a tough time, don't do something to make it worse. Keep loving your wife. Keep loving your husband. Keep taking care of your kids. Keep doing your work keep praying, do the things that you know are right. Uh, Just do the next right thing. So I agree with you, my brother. I I think this is a time of sanctification and may the Lord sanctify us and our sanctification be, be an encouragement to our, our neighbors and coworkers. You know, Max, a lot of times people will ask me, they'll say, how are you doing? And I've kind of adapted a saying to go that, that, that I reply to him. I go, well, I'm doing good except for the trouble I've brought on myself. You know, because usually, usually I can track back any problem I'm having to something I did that was stupid. Yeah. You know, if I would just quit doing stupid things, that would take out 90% of the problems. I mean, there's some I can't control, obviously, but the yeah. majority of them, dadgum, I bring them right on myself, you know? 
<laughs> oh, I know it. I know it. Yeah, somebody, we were having a conversation yeah. here some time ago about what we want on our epitaph. And, you know, I've shared with you guys that I'm just a converted drunk. I was a mess by the time I was 20 years old when the yeah. Lord called me. I would not, no, no dad would want their daughter to go out with the teenage version of Max. And I said, okay, here's my epitaph. Pretty good for a drunk. Pretty good for a drunk. Uh -huh. if, I, if I've done anything in life, it's pretty good for a drunk, by God's mercy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've said before, if, if God forgave me of everything that I did, forgiving you, whoever I'm talking to, I said, will not be a big deal for him. No. That's right. That's yeah. right. He, he's already shown what he can do with us, hasn't he? Amen. I, I, the book is called uh, You Are Never Alone. Uh, you can certainly get it by going to maxlicato.com and get that information. Whether you're someone who's already made that decision for Christ, it will encourage encourage you and kind of motivate you to the life that we're called to. But even if you're out there searching, this is a great book for you to maybe take and say, you know, what? I've been prompted to look into this. I hear them talking about, and this book can help you uh, on that journey as well. Max, thanks for taking time as always to include yeah. us and um, maxlicato.com for any information that you need. God and bless you, fighting, brother. Keep fighting the good fight, Max. God bless you. It's always a treat. Stay safe and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And I love Eight, that headset you got, Max. There you go. That You're a rocking nice. Zoom, buddy. <laughs> it looks like I'm about to fly into outer space. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,